Well guys, we have had an awesome canning week so far. Between tomato juice and peppers and chicken broth, we are well underway for filling that pantry up. As you saw in our most recent pantry tour there, after the Every Bit Counts Challenge, still quite a few gaps. I'm not happy about how much is left in there. And that is where this Stock in September Challenge really comes in. Now how does this fill our homegrown pantry, you ask? Well, let me tell you, because even though we've done all this canning, we still have more canning to do this week because we still have those tomatoes left over. Now, I did put six more pounds of those tomatoes into the freezer just because they were starting to get really, really ripe and I've got a whole bunch more that I need to go out and pick anyways. So, first thing we're going to be doing today is telling you what we got on our stock in September this week in order to fill that pantry. So, for stock in September this week, got my cheat sheet. We spent $13.21, so we've actually got a, a leftover for next week, so maybe I will be able to really stock. But what did we buy? Celery, $2.99, not on sale. None of this was on sale, but it was stuff I needed to further our progress in the pantry. And six jalapenos. As many of you know, we only grow the one kind of pepper, so I don't have hot peppers. And today we're going to be making Southwest salsa. That is why I needed orange juice. These were on for $2.29. I got two for in the pantry and one for the orange juice in the salsa, but I do love to have orange juice in the pantry come cold and flu season. I can't explain it, but there's just something about orange juice when you're sick that just feels right. And we don't buy it any other time of the year, but you know what happens. If I don't stock up on these little guys now while they're on sale, I have to run to my local store and pay $8. And that ends up costing quite a bit in the long run. So this is what we've managed to uh, stock away this week. So I'm gonna put two of these in the pantry. I'm really hoping for seven or eight jars of salsa. And this celery is going to become soup. So stay tuned as we get cooking for the rest of this video. So today's recipe is out of one of my favorite books, Small Batch Preserving. I do enjoy this book, but I don't do small batches. I always multiply it by at least three because I like to just get her done. I know they're good recipes in this book. So even though this recipe is only supposed to make four cups of salsa, we're gonna triple it and hopefully get 12 of those nice little jars. Uh, I'd like to at least get 10 anyway. So for that, we needed two jalapenos per batch. So that is why I purchased the six jalapenos. We could also add a little more spunk to it if we need with some of our Aurora dried peppers that we have from last year. But I have a feeling those six jalapenos will just top it off really, really nicely. So we've already got our tomatoes washed up from that harvest video and they're still sitting here. So we're gonna get them chopped up. I'm not gonna de-skin them or anything. We're just gonna go for it, chopping them up. And uh, I need 12 cups. One thing I will say as I am working on chopping up these tomatoes is I love the San Marzano or Roma type tomato for salsa because of the ease of removing the seeds. All I need to do is just swoop my thumb in there and just kind of out into a container and there we go you got that nice little meaty part in the middle and everything else is out so I love that about these tomatoes all right I finally got all those tomatoes chopped up and it is time to get going this is such a simple recipe the southwest salsa you just bung everything in the pot turn it on get it to a boil 30 minutes boiling jar it up in the oven it's that easy i'm going to quickly go through the ingredients here as i put it into the pot one thing i will say is i like to chop all of the vegetables by hand except for the garlic and the jalapenos uh, because i like it to be a chunkier salsa that's just the way we are around here you could run it all through the food processor if you'd like it just makes it a really fine kind of mush um, so it just depends on your taste buds, but we like it a little chunky. So I'm going to finish getting all of my onions and peppers chopped up and into their containers. And then I'm going to bring you back as we get this all into the pot. But the big job is done. 12 cups of tomatoes and I still have a few left in that bowl for dinner tonight. And then it's going to be rinse and repeat out there getting some more. Actually won't be rinse and repeat because I still have to go get tomatoes for the soup for tomorrow. So we'll be doing that later. And I also have to get my meat out of the freezer. I can't forget that or else it is a delay and I hate delays. So 
let's get this salsa made up. Now, one thing I will say is you want to sterilize your jars for this because it is not a pressure canning recipe. So 225 in the oven, I always do 11 minutes just to be on the safe side and then they're good to go. Get those lids into some steaming water, not boiling, just hot. And uh, that just helps that rubber soften up so you get a really, really nice seal. But I'm gonna get everything organized and I'll come back and go through the ingredients with you. All right, so here we go. So we have our 12 cups of chopped tomatoes, three cups of chopped onions, one and a half cups of sweet red peppers, one and a half cups of red wine vinegar, six tablespoons of orange juice, three tablespoons of lime juice, nine cloves of garlic, and six jalapenos. Now I did these in the food processor to get them nice and finely chopped. Now the last ingredient to go in this pot besides our tomato paste right at the end is cilantro. Now it calls for three quarters of a cup of fresh cilantro. I suck at growing cilantro. I've never been successful at it. It always ends up being coriander. So I have dried cilantro that I've bought. Now I'm kind of winging it here. Uh, normally I would buy fresh, but the fresh just looked like garbage. So I bought dried and I'm thinking to go with five teaspoons. What do you guys think? I'm going to try it. We'll see how we uh, feel about it after that, but I'm going to go with five teaspoons of dried cilantro. I'm really hoping I'm not disappointed with this decision. You know, what? I'm only going to do four because that's a lot of cilantro. That's it. We're going to get this to a boil. Uh, it needs to boil for uh, 30 minutes uh, and then we put the paste in and bring it back to a boil for two minutes before we jar it. Wait a minute! I didn't put the rest of the ingredients in. I got distracted by the cilantro. We still need three teaspoons of sugar and three teaspoons of pickling salt or uh, of course like or a sea salt, something like that. Non-iodized basically is what we're going for here. So I'm going to get those in and then I will bring you back when it is time to add that paste and we'll see how it looks and tastes then. All right, guys, so we have been our 30 minutes. It's still a little bit on the runny side, but we are going to add our tomato paste and then let it go for a few more minutes and see if it thickens up. One thing that I did do while this was cooking up is I went and got my four pounds of ground lamb for our soup. So we'll be coming back to that after we've canned up this and made dinner. So the last ingredient to go in is three quarters of a cup of tomato paste. Now this is homemade tomato paste. I have in one cup jars. So to be honest, because of the head space, it's actually a little less than one cup anyway. So I'm just gonna put the whole thing in and I think it's gonna work out perfect. So let's do that and see how thick it ends up. And there we go. You can see it's uh, still needing some more time, but that paste has to boil for three minutes anyways. All right, we are ready to jar it up. We want to take it to a half inch of head space. Give the rim a wipe. A nice soap lid on there. And our ring. That's hot. And then into the water bath canner it goes. All right, so we got it all finished up and in the water bath canner. 13 jars. That's the max that my water bath canner will hold anyways. And I had a little bit left over for our tacos for tonight for supper. So 20 minutes in the water bath canner and then we're all done for the day. But, well, I shouldn't say we're done for the day. We're done for the canning portion of the day. All right, it is the moment of truth. It's had time to cool off and we're about to have tacos for dinner and I'm going to be the guinea pig. Mm. It's perfect. I will admit, I put an extra teaspoon of sugar in because I thought it tasted a little on the salty side. So I added an extra teaspoon of sugar and I'm glad I did. It's perfect, just enough kick for us. You might like to add a few more jalapenos if you like a little spice, because this is not spicy, this is quite mild. But it's wonderful, we're gonna eat dinner, and then we're gonna go pick tomatoes. Well, I need 12 pounds for this recipe, and I think we are there with this bucket. But one thing I'm seeing out here is our tomato canning is not complete. Check this out. 
Look at all of these tomatoes. They're all falling on the ground and ripe and ready to go. So it looks like we're going to be continuing the tomato canning saga. So I definitely think this is 12 pounds. It's pretty heavy and they don't want to stay in the bowl. I should have brought a bigger bowl. All right, guys. So we're on to day two of the canning project here for Stock at September. Yesterday you saw us, we made 13 jars of that Southwest salsa with those jalapenos. Now granted, I know there's other products in there that I purchased previously for the pantry, like the red wine vinegar, things like that. So obviously there are other things that get purchased, but we're just focusing on what I purchased to finish these projects and what I can use here to then get those into the pantry for a stocking in September to see us through the winter. And today is no different. We're gonna be making my lemony basil soup. I do have a video on this already, which I will link above, whichever side it comes in. And I know I'm terrible at that, so you might have to check below. <laughs> but we do have a more in detailed video on making this soup. In that video, I used rabbit meat. Today I'm using lamb meat because that is what we have plenty of right now and I'm trying to get it out of the freezer. So that is where we're at right now. We're going to get our lamb meat frying up and we're going to go through all those tomatoes and get them through the juicer so that we can get on with making this soup. But what are we using from Stock at September for this soup? Celery, that's right, $2.99 for this thing of celery. This thing, bunch, I guess, cluster. <laughs> <laughs> this bunch of celery, $2.99, and what I'm hoping to get from this is seven meals in the pantry. Seven one-liter jars. I'm probably going to skip ahead on a lot of parts rather than bore you with the details, but first we're going to get our meat going and our tomatoes juiced, and then I'll bring you back. All right, so our meat is all cooked off, drained of all that lard. Now, I typically use something like a taco seasoning, or James makes up this seasoning that he puts on potatoes that is fantastic. Maybe one day he'll share it. I've kind of done a combination of both in there and it smells amazing. So next is getting all of our vegetables ready to go in the pot. Another thing that I should quickly mention is that if you do not have a pressure canner, this is a pressure canning recipe. If you do not have a pressure canner, you can do this in a water bath canner. You just need to omit the meat. So basically all the vegetables, the tomato juice or, or juice tomatoes, that sort of thing, no problem at all. And it'll be 35 minutes in a water bath canner for a half pint. I think it's 45 for full quarts. I will double check on that. But we are doing this as a pressure canning. So in the end, these quart jars are gonna need 90 minutes in the pressure canner. Now this is the wok that I cooked my meat in. So normally you would put a little bit of olive oil or butter in the bottom of that pan, but I still have oil left for my meat. The first thing we need in here is our four cups of onions. And you can see how nice and finely chopped those are. I will admit I use the Cuisinart or the uh, food processor to get these all done. Even my carrots I did in the food processor because it is so much quicker and easier than trying to finely chop everything. One cup of celery, now I've crept a little bit over, we're probably closer to one and a half, but that's the beauty of these recipes. They are flexible and quite forgiving. So you work with what you got and if you've got an extra stick of celery, get her used up. Now I'm gonna let this onion and celery cook for a little bit just to get those onions kind of translucent. As I've said before in numerous videos, I don't like my onions to not be at least a little bit cooked before they go into the pressure canner. There's something about the flavor for me and I just, I prefer them to be really soft. And there you go. You can see those onions and everything are just perfect. Now we're going to add, it's supposed to be two and a half cups of carrots. I've got about three three in a bit, and you can see how perfect they worked up in the food processor. Some bits are bigger, some bits are smaller. It just makes for a really nice soup, I find. And the last thing to go in here is our garlic. We need six cloves of garlic. As all of you know, we grow and eat a lot of garlic, so I've got eight here. And then we're just gonna give that a few more minutes, put it into the pot with our meat, and get our juice in there. All right, so while those vegetables were frying off, I got my herbs from the garden and have got them into the cup. Basically what you're looking for is one cup pressed down of, whoops, as I throw some on the floor, of basil and parsley. Uh, you could swap this out for whatever you'd like if you have oregano or if there's a different type of herb that you really like. Fenugreek is a really nice one too that you could put into this soup and it calls for one cup chopped. 
So I always kind of bulk it out really, really thick so that I know I've got enough flavor going into the soup because more herbs and flavor, the better. Four teaspoons of kosher salt. Really, there's very few ingredients left. I'm looking, I've got my cheat sheet here and I'm like, there really isn't a whole lot to put in this. So uh, we need the four teaspoons of kosher salt. It calls for a quarter cup of sugar. Now we're not going to be doing that today because we're going to be putting in our powdered stevia and we're finding one teaspoon is about a cup. So I'm going to do a quarter teaspoon of our stevia powder in here. It's another way that we use stevia here. It's just that green plant dried and powdered up in our coffee grinder. It works amazing. Then two tablespoons of finely shredded lemon peel, which I do not have. So we're skipping that for today in this batch. I do prefer it with it, but I don't have any. So we're going without. And then three quarters of a cup of lemon juice. That's it. One thing I really have to say is what I just did there with the stevia powder, that is the ultimate way that we are really cutting the sugars out. All those little meals where you put that little bit of sugar, for example, coleslaw dressing, instead of sugar, I use the stevia powder. Lemon poppy seed dressing, it's the stevia powder. James even made chocolate chip cookies with stevia powder instead of the sugar. They were green, it was interesting, but still tasty. And I'm gonna to touch on that once we've tweaked it a little bit more to get it perfect. But I absolutely love growing the stevia and it certainly works great for helping reduce the sugar intake that we're having here on the homestead. All right, we are just about to boil. So I am going to add that basil and parsley in. Didn't chop up as finely as I would have liked, but it will be just fine. There, we'll just give that a stir in. We'll get that back up to its boil. And then we will jar it up. You can see in the back here, the steam coming from my lids. They are just simmering in their water there. They got a bit of uh, basil in there from our uh, tipping over the herbs. All right, so we have those seven jars in the pressure canner. 90 minutes for quarts, 75 if you did pints to be able to take them for lunches or something like that. I even had enough left over that I'm cooking this off now so that Chris and I can have it for lunch. Perfect opportunity for a taste test. Although it's a little late as it's already in the canner, so I'm not going to be uh, changing it if it needs any changes. We'll have to do that at the time. But usually this recipe turns out absolutely perfect. So. I will bring you back once we've got those out of the canner and we'll take a look at what we achieved in this stock in September. All right, so you can probably hear the pressure canner bubbling away. We are up to temperature, so it's time to relax for an hour and a half. That's my favorite part of pressure canning, I think, is the hour and a half, you gotta wait. Now, I mentioned we're having this soup for lunch, so I'm gonna give it a try. The ultimate question, was there anything that should have been added? Hopefully not. Oh, it's pretty good. It is pretty good. I know I say that all the time, but it's my cooking. Of course it's good. I love it. That's why I'm sharing it with you guys. <laughs> but the one thing I'm going to say is we've started watching the salt intake. And previously, I probably would have added more salt to that. But today, I'm going to resist the urge and behave myself and just eat it as it is. So we're going to have lunch with a smoothie. You can kind of see it behind me. And then I will bring you back when this is out of the canner. And we will talk about what we did with our stock at September haul. Well guys, it was another productive week here and that stock in September certainly helped us get a lot in the pantry for very little money spent. And I still have a whole bunch of celery left. So hopefully we can do another round of this soup because we had it for lunch and it was, oh, so good. And it is one of our favorites. The kids always, if you ask them to go choose something for lunch, they come up with lemon basil soup. It happens all the time. So believe me, I've done it before and had close to 60 jars and right now I've probably got about 14 or 15 in total considering I still had some left over from last year. But, uh, am I starving? What? My starving cat. So <laughs> these seven jars are not going to make it the distance. So we're definitely going to be making some more as those tomatoes ripen. But 13 jars of this gorgeous Southwest salsa. If you try it, definitely let me know what you think because it is becoming one of our favorites. We really like that one right along with our charred salsa. So stock in September, not too bad. I didn't even go over budget and we're putting a lot back into the pantry this week. So I think that is fantastic and definitely stay tuned for next week's stock at September because we're going a different angle again so <laughs> definitely stick with us and we shall get all this back in the pantry.